Yeah, we always have to do the intro. Can we just, can we, <laughs> can we record the intro? It's not going to sound the same. We can't do it. Yeah, because we always have to say, and today we're going to be watching, and then yeah. you're going to have a set thing, and then you're going to have it cut in with horror <laughs> on the high desert. Yeah. yeah. It's so, I don't know why it cringes me out so bad. I think it's because it feels so fake. Because it is scripted. And the rest of it is not scripted. It's scripted. And it's just like, who, is, who am I saying this to? Who am I saying this to? Me. My mom. <laughs> my mom. My mom, yeah. <laughs> Your mom and only my boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> our boyfriend. <laughs> our boyfriend. <laughs> and our husband. <laughs> I'm B. I'm Smage. Welcome to Cinema, where we talk about all things cinema and all things muck. Uh, today, we're going to be watching Horror in the High Desert. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't God, that, that bad. was awful. See, it was great. I'm pressing on my eyeballs so hard. <laughs> You're going to pop your eyeballs into yeah. your skull. So would you recommend uh, somebody watch this? Yes, but really? only kind of. I would say... Go, just say it with your chest, yes or no. I'm Honestly, saying no. Honestly, yeah, no. I don't want say no. I would say no. I would say if you had like an Am- what was it, Amazon Prime? If you have a Prime account, so there's I watched not- it on Tubi. Oh, oh and with and ads. That's free, right? Yeah. With ads? Yeah, okay, free with yeah. ads. I would say if you're gonna watch it and it's free and you just wanna watch something that's kind of like if you wanna watch a throwaway film that takes only an hour and twenty minutes and it's found footage documentary style horror. Yeah. horror if you're horror. in the mood for that, but you don't want to be like really invested or even like scared honestly to be honest it was like two seconds where i was scared that, yeah that's it that's it yeah then you can watch it then you can watch it yeah but because if you're looking for like a genuine horror you know like, found this footage is, this aliens this is not it no this no. isn't it if anything I... it's annoying more than it <laughs> and it didn't suck i'll say that it, it did didn't not suck, suck no. but you could tell that there was a budget and you could tell that the direction of it maybe wasn't so great the pacing was weird the lead up to our conflict wasn't the greatest yeah conflict itself lasted way too long way too long uh it should have ended way sooner than yeah. it did and then the conclusion was kind of like meh yeah and then it immediately lead you into a sequel i'm also which, like who it who? goes into a sequel yeah it was on two for fucking what i went to go rewind it to hit the, the oh. conflict at the very end, the dot, the they screens say, that the, the yeah text screens that it they says have. That, like, there's this one group specifically, that, and it follows them. Yeah. Oh, I kind of want to watch it now. I do too. Not gonna lie, because I have you watched it? No, I but I accidentally skipped to. I was trying to rewind the first movie uh-huh. back to the conflict because uh-huh. I wanted to see it again because he it scared him. I, mean, I was just like, bitch. But when I clicked on it, it had already jumped to the next movie, oh. which was number two. And I, it was in the middle of it. And she looked a little little weirder that time. And I was just like, huh. hmm. maybe we should watch it then. Well, I'd love to. Yeah, I think that'd be good. A good follow up. Maybe yeah. maybe they learned uh, their mistakes. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we do that for the next one then? Made a better movie. Yeah, yeah. I would do that. Let's do that. Okay. Well then, yeah, I don't recommend watching the first one, but maybe I'll recommend watching the second one. Yeah, we'll see. In which case, you should probably watch the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they go through and they like give all the exposition from the first one then. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but getting into this movie Mm. like we said horror in the high desert Mm -hmm. again the pacing of it was a little weird we're following it's like it's documentary style yeah so you've got your talking heads yeah lots of talking heads your b-roll going on you've got um different people from different parts of like what eventually becomes an investigation exactly a yeah. family member a roommate a friend a private journalist yeah i'm uh, sorry private investigator a yeah. journalist that kind of thing yeah but news footage and i that. i'm a little i don't know we'll just get into it because now that i'm thinking <laughs> back in the movie i'm just like it could have been so much better it could have been so much better there was some there for was what i felt like did not would not have been much more of a budget there were several things that they could have left out and a couple things you could have expanded on but the movie would have been way shorter and i think that's where yeah. everybody thinks that it needs to be an hour long and like bitch put that shit in 45 minutes we're introduced to most of our talking heads some mm-hmm. of them come later on but we're introduced to most of our talking heads and then we're also introduced to the main dude that this documentary found footage thing is about which yeah, his yeah, name is gary gary hinge and then we also have simon who is his roommate mm-hmm. we have gail who is the investigative journalist. Mm-hmm. And we have, as of right now, Beverly, mm-hmm. who is his sister. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie, not believable. 
Beverly no, is a sister, not believable. Not believable. Love her hair. Oh my god. I like, was gonna say, like Bevy was rocking that hair. She was rocking that hair. It was hair. amazing. Yeah. She like, looked great. She was given blowout for days. Yes. Yeah. Farrah Fawcett. I was so impressed. And I was too. with the gray coming through. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. No, I agree. The, every time that I saw her come on screen, I was like, girl, where the fuck did you get this hair? It made me feel like she had big sister energy Mm -hmm. but i was also just like i like you like as a person separate from the movie you seem like a nice person to yeah like you'd be cool to hang out with yeah yeah i just don't believe that you're gary's sister (laughs) no (laughs) of no offense to her but there was like obviously a huge age difference yeah and which like that happens yeah but there was also just like he very much looked like a white man and she looked like somebody who didn't know that they had brown heritage do you know what i'm saying yes you know what i mean yeah no that's fair that's valid not like specifically african-american or yeah. specifically indigenous just something like that I, nose gave it away i felt like simon the roommate would have been a more believable brother brother than mm-hmm. bevy was a sister yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. so maybe not because of the age it gave like aunt yeah 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 like someone who is close enough to be like i really care and love about love yeah. this person i really care about love this person but like far enough away to be like i'm not like directly related though yeah i'm not like we lived in the same house for like right probably a decade together kind of energy mm-hmm. yeah but so we're introduced to those three people so far oh and don't forget you forget tuka oh, i'm sorry tuka the dog. the dog i'm sorry the dog tuka. doesn't die thank god no thank god dog's never introduced i'm happy about that dog's never introduced like the dog is never a part of anything going on oh yeah yeah they just exist just in uh, photos and stuff yeah but it wasn't like in the desert with with him while we're introduced to those three characters we're also introduced to the beginning of what would be the investigation into gary's disappearance Mm -hmm. with beverly (laughs) making a 911 call Mm -hmm. saying i don't know what the hell is happening my brother has us allegedly Mm -hmm. been missing for two weeks Mm -hmm. And I just found that out two days ago, Mm -hmm. and he is not back. He's left his dog, and his roommate left after saying all this weird-ass shit. Yeah, be mad sassy. Please come help me, because I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And so, immediately, my mind, true crime brain, I'm like, oh, Simon killed him, Mm -hmm. and is like, peace. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? And this is when we eventually find out that, like, this is taking place in the initial investigation is taking place in 2017, Mm -hmm. July 2017. Mm -hmm. Gary decided to go hiking in Nevada, but he went, yeah, hiking in the Nevada desert, which apparently he does all the time. Yeah, he's not just, that's the thing, he's not just a hiker. He is a survivalist. He's an outdoor enthusiast. He's like a naked and afraid, I'm going to be gone for like six days with nothing but just my backpack and like a Glock for some reason and no that's not ever even introduced no but he does uh, no he said i mean i think it's kind of like assumed i didn't assume shit if you're a survivalist who has the means to have a gun it was not far-fetched for me to believe that he would have a firearm i thought that it at most was going to be like bear mace and a giant hunting knife <laughs> honey there's no bears out there girl bear mace doesn't just affect bears i know but why <laughs> would he have bear mace there's he's like, a man there's you know what <laughs> anyways so during all of this again like like we said this is we're also getting like cut into oh simon is gary's roommate beverly is his sister mm-hmm. and all of this is being said by gail which mm-hmm. i'm just like gail why the fuck are you here yeah i understand that we need almost kind of like a third party perspective Mm -hmm. but and also if it's following that kind of like documentary style Mm -hmm. and whatnot this is where that believability would have come in if you want me to believe that gail is an investigative journalist highlight some things that she a news segment yes an article literally photoshop that shit Something that actually proves to me, because otherwise this is just some lady on a webcam looking say, off the screen for yeah, some reason. I think all of this exposition should have been explained by Gail. Yeah. And anything personal, like talking about like Tuca, talking about um, how he got like really hyper fixated on survivalism and stuff like that. That would have been fine from Bevy because she would have just been like, this is the weird shit my brother was into. Yeah. And I love him for it. But like, it was kind of odd. Whereas like Gail would be like, man's was into trains man's liked going out there and just kind of winging it and doing shit like that 
she should have been the one to introduce a blog, you know, mm-hmm. when that finally came out. Like that's But instead every and this even or like my even my my husband when mm-hmm. he was watching this with me, he was like, "Why is everybody saying the same three things?" Yes. That he loves trains, yep. he loves being outdoors. Yep. And he was kind of he he was always like nice. Yeah. Every all three of them. Everyone said Simon it. Beverly and yeah. Gail. And I'm like, "Guys, only one of you needs to say it." Yeah. I think Gail, she made a statement talking about how just like she became really intrigued by Gary, just kind of like in general as a person. I think her saying that would have been enough. Right. Because I, I think that the notion is that like Simon didn't seem to not get along with him. So I kind of assume he likes him. Okay, cool. And Gail is he not Gail. Uh, Bevy is here talking about her brother and she seems really concerned and also made the 911 call. I'm going to assume you also like him too. Right. So I don't need you guys to explain to me that. Uh, Gail explaining why she was so intrigued in it and just mm-hmm. as personal as like a personal kind of thing. Yeah. As a uh, investigative journalist yeah. like that would that would have been fine. Somebody outside of his every day usual routine yes who's yeah. just like yeah this and guy was actually intriguing also using gail as a person who is filling in the shoes of the audience yes of like yeah. hey somebody also from the outside me mm-hmm. i didn't know this stuff so you should know this stuff yeah i started gather- i started finding out this information i thought it was intriguing you would find it intriguing yeah that i don't need perfect. fucking everybody to say i it. don't need everyone to no. talk to me about his model trains <laughs> and his hiking around looking at model trains but are big and then also for some fucking reason talk about how nice he is but he was like he liked being by himself yeah like, okay cool so luckily thank you everyone yeah once we <laughs> get done with all of that exposition dump then we actually start getting into the meat and bones of this investigation because this is where we're also like you said tuka his dog mm-hmm. this is where we're introduced kind of to tuka and mm-hmm. why this was so weird yeah from simon's perspective his roommate mm-hmm. because simon said you know it's normal for him to go hiking and do this kind of stuff for mm-hmm. a long time he always takes tuka yes he did not take tuka this time yeah which was weird yeah and, and like, in Simon, fact no offense bud if that's the first red flag ask a fucking question say anything be like hey are you feeling okay why aren't you taking your dog mm-hmm. are you going somewhere dangerous that you don't want your dog to get hurt yeah what is the reason for not taking where tuka? are you going yeah Oh, the Nevada desert? Fucking where? Fucking where? Why? Why is? How is this any different than any other time? Literally that hundreds you have gone? of acres of worth of desert. Where? Point it on a map button. Just put some, like put a pin. Little tack, somewhere. Something. Anything. Why are we not taking Tuca? But immediately, oh, that's so strange that you're not taking your dog on this hike that you're being so secretive about. La 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 la. la. That you're being really weird about. That you, you know, like kind of like not having a great time. You know, you're not super jazzed about yeah. it because he was like jittery and yeah. not having a great time that week Simon. after he came back. What was it? What did he say? He came back from a trip and he was like freaked out. He was so weird. Yeah. He was acting not OK. He was kind of secluded, seemed really jittery, seemed really scared. And then all of a sudden, hey, man, I'm going to go back out in the desert for six days and I'm not taking my dog this time. Peace, love, happiness. See you later. No yeah. questions. Yeah. Zero questions. Simon, I all Simon to... cared about was, OK, man, just make sure that you're back in time so you can catch my my flight out of vegas not a down bitch not a what the fuck not a, down Ask bitch. a single question simon anything fuck it's giving male best friend it's giving male best friend <laughs> but simon knew that gary would probably be back within about a two-week range mm-hmm. and then it was two weeks and then it was two weeks plus two days mm-hmm. and, and simon needs to leave and simon needs to go on his trip which he knew that gary knew mm-hmm. and he also was just like i can't take care of your dog while i'm gone because i won't fucking be here mm-hmm. so what does he do he doesn't call the cops to say hey my best friend is missing this is really weird behavior mm-hmm. or my roommate i'm not even gonna say best friend my roommate is missing my roommate after having point. all this weird behavior yeah what does he do hey oh he goes ring ring hey beverly um <laughs> So your brother hasn't come back from a, a two week plus two day hike that he was supposed to. And I got to fucking skedaddle. Come get this goddamn dog. Yeah. Simon. Bevy being sussy almost immediately. I was like, yeah, I would have been. Yeah. I Bev is immediately like, like, did you you're kill telling, my brother? You're telling, yeah, literally. She just rolls up. It's just like, hey, man, yeah, I'll totally take the dog. By the way, did you kill my fucking brother? Yeah. Because you're sitting here on the phone telling me, oh, yeah, he went on a six day hike two weeks and a two days ago. Six six days and didn't take his dog. How many and days are in, back? I'd be like, how many days are in two weeks, Simon? How many days? <laughs> how many days are in two weeks? Oh, 14 plus two more. Sixteen. Tell me he's been gone ten fucking days outside of the range that he was supposed to be gone, and you're just like, oh hey, I'm not gonna say a fucking thing. 
And also, hey, now it's last minute and I really got to... He's literally... He waited last minute was the thing. Yeah. He waited until the day of his flight to call Bevy. Yeah. To be like, hey, man, I got no other option. Can you come get this dog? Are you fucking kidding me? Man's has been gone for like literally over half a month. Yeah. And you're just now being like, this is inconveniencing me. You're like, hey, I got a flight ticket. In like a couple hours, come get this dog. Yeah. And, the f- and like, she literally shows up and is just like, have you not decided to call the police in here? It's just like, I got to go catch my flight. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I and like I get it Simon just kind of seems like a dumbass for that whole thing right and like I don't know his age I'm gonna guess he's in his mid-20s so like I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt but like who 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 are you who is just like this is fine who dare like who dare you who dare you who dare you like honestly though because like who who I don't I don't understand the connection that was being made that's why I was just like can we go into this because if Bevy didn't throw hands with him if Bevy didn't beat his ass yeah. before he got on that fucking flight, I would have. Yeah. I'd be like, you're telling me, hello? I would have been like, hey, bud, guess what you're not fucking doing? Getting on a goddamn flight. Guess what I'm going to do? Zip tie you to a chair until the police come. And then you can answer to them as to why my brother's been gone for yeah. two weeks and two days when he was only supposed to be gone for six, two weeks ago. And what do we do? We get that for like two seconds. Yeah. We get, we get yeah, Bev showed up and was like really pissed off at me. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Fucking blah, 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 blah. And then she took the dog and I, I left and here's the 911 call. Hello. I'm... But you know what we're going to talk about for half an hour? We're going to have three people talk about how much he loves trains. I don't understand. Was so kind. <laughs> I don't... Survivalist hiking. <laughs> you know what we're not going to spend more than two minutes on? Bevy's conflict with Simon. And the fucking thing <laughs> is, she is so easy. Once things start getting a little bit weird yeah. towards like literally the last third of the movie yeah that's when she's just like i'm okay with simon huh yeah listen bitch not until i see physical proof that you didn't kill my fucking brother yeah i'm not cool with you no you it's it is i am so close to throwing hands it is every time you are in my line of sight literally guilty until proven innocent with you yeah absolutely I, are you kidding me there's no way that i'm just like and just oh, rolled the off cop for, said and literally I fuck what the cops yeah, said rolled off for like water i'm like even even after everything even after everything that came out, I would have still been like, mm. yeah. See, this is mm. b- literally we are making the movie better. It would have been two seconds of a look over that fucking rough I, draft. I really feel like if we Someone just wrote went down through once. what actually happened in the movie, this episode would have been ten minutes. But because we're sitting here complaining like two fat bitch who have never made a film in their <laughs> life. And I mean, honestly, if we want to talk about it, if we want to give what actually happens, fucking. Gary went missing. Yep. Gary went out into the desert. Gary found some weird shit, came back, got bullied by his viewers, went back out there, and is now missing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's all that happens. That's all that happens. And then the very end of the conflict. That's it. That's it. Wow. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> bye bye. No. But in reality, what happens Oops, what happens at this point when right after the nine one one call is happening? We're getting an understanding of Bevy and Gary did not have a good relationship. They Mm -hmm. were not very close, which I could potentially have seen lending itself into her also having to explain his personality as obviously, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this. He was an outdoor enthusiast. He loved loved trains trains and (laughs) and he was a good guy. I don't know if you heard us say that, you know, I don't know if we forgot. Just in case we forgot. Yeah. Uh, Apparently that's, that's him. Apparently. That's Gary. Allegedly. Yes. Allegedly. From the mouths of three different people Mm -hmm. for at least half an hour but they didn't have a great relationship no because ever since and this this kind of did make me sad yeah but ever since gary was little i don't know if you know this he was an outdoor enthusiast (laughs) um (laughs) and he was also while he was kind he was kind of weird it's kind of strange he was kind of weird it's giving autism no offense guys like it's dead autism dead ass as soon as he as soon as they were just like yeah but it wasn't like hiking it was like he like really got into survivalism i was like oh yeah hyper fixated oh he's hyper fixated on these two specific things oh and then like this thing like really gave him like made him feel free yeah Mm -hmm. it's the autism it's the autism babes (laughs) yeah but so the reason why their relationship is not good is because when Simon was little, he used to go out and explore by himself a lot. He was kind of like, he would fuck around and never find out really. I mean, yeah, he was always fine. The family, Bevy, Gary, and their parents, their mom and their dad, they decide to go out camping. And the parents, here's where I'm also just like, y'all are fucking dumb. Yeah. The parents decide stupid. to leave the kids at the campsite which I guess they're near like a lake or something like that. Something. And the parents are going to go nighttime fishing. And so they hang up a lantern. Here's another thing where I'm fucking confused. They hang up a lantern 
close to i'm assuming the docks yeah was like the fucking singular lantern for this family right anyway they decide to hang a lantern i'm assuming at the docks because it's not really made clear from from what they say but i'm assuming that so that they could avoid the rocks when they come back Mm -hmm. and they go out into the lake they go fishing while they're out fishing gary decides to take again the one singular lamp that this family apparently owns Mm -hmm and go look for frogs or something like you that. You went to go look Crickets, for something. Worms. Yeah, that's on like the shore bank. Yeah, so he moves the lamp. He goes and he looks for things. And I'm assuming he's a small child. Mm. I'm not assuming that he's somebody who yeah. should know better. Yeah. It, yeah. He or like has like a memory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so he moves the lamp and then he goes or the lantern. He goes and he does his little thing and then he decides to go back to their campsite. Doesn't move the lantern back where it's supposed to go. Mm-hmm. Oh no. The parents fucking i guess high speed that shit right into the rocks this is where i'm this is where i was confused i was like and also i did they just not have safety jackets on and he's sort of like radar rip current right like what anyway they drown yeah they hit the rocks and they drown they drown and they're dead yeah and so bevy is now having to deal with gary who i guess killed their parents yeah that's what she no offense to them they kind of there was a lot of stupid they shit that killed happened. themselves yeah at this because point. like i don't know what happened and like they knew that gary did dumb shit and like yeah. wanted to go and explore and why stuff. not take him with you why not on take the both boat? your fucking kids with you yeah you left them at a campsite in the middle of the woods at or night? like on the shoreline at night at night hey guess what still hunts at night bears bears any uh, there's a lot of things that fucking come out at night mountain lions yeah you know yeah deer they don't hunt but they you know it's scary opossums skunks can spray you opossums are not violent but they could scare you yeah definitely scare you especially when they open their mouth up you know owls owls are terrifying i know bud this is also part of the movie where we get like almost kind of like our first misdirection kind of like a big misdirection to me and it's when simon is explaining how i don't know if you guys know this but uh, gary was an outdoor enthusiast (laughs) um so (laughs) Like, that's gonna be the bit for, the, for be the, the episode bit, yeah but simon went out on one of these hikes with gary in, yeah. in the nevada desert yeah and he thought that it was gonna be like a hike like a fun little camping trip or mm-hmm. whatever until he realized that like they did they gary purposely did not pack enough food enough water enough nothing mm-hmm. because again i don't know if you guys know this but he was an outdoor enthusiast, was an outdoor, outdoor and, survivalist enthusiast yeah he wanted to guy. do like a survivalist kind of thing yeah and so his whole point was to like look around at the land and stuff like mm-hmm. that and simon was just like yo fuck this i'm never doing this yeah, again like, i'm not doing this so he did that and he says that like there was some cool shit that they came across mm-hmm. like that yeah the old mining town. most specifically the 1800s mining tunnels that mm-hmm. are boarded up mm-hmm. and i was just like okay so clearly they're playing the seed to think Mm -hmm. gary is missing maybe he's one of these tunnels Mm -hmm. maybe he went into one of these tunnels and Mm -hmm. came across something supernatural i don't know why they didn't go with this fucking route (laughs) but all right but okay the fact that simon went on this hike with gary Mm -hmm. i feel like could have lended to the idea that he was like this is why i'm not nervous he didn't explain that this is why i wasn't nervous up until i became kind of nervous yes uh, or why even after i called bevy and he- and said hey come take care of tuca because mm-hmm. simon or because uh gary hasn't come back yet mm-hmm. why he could have been like i still wasn't even concerned then because i've been with him before i, I know what he's like in that situation yeah. i trust his instincts they could have on both ends they could have had it to where like if bevy had found that out she could have become even more suspicious of Simon and his motives because it could have been that, well, he's been out there with him. Right. So he knows the desert just like he does. Right. Just like Gary right. does. Right. There's so many and ways Simon that Simon could, could have used it to be like, look, the reason why I wasn't worried about the fact that he was gone for two weeks is because he was being mad weird. So I thought maybe he needed some time. Mm-hmm. And also I've been out there with him and he not only helped himself survive, but he helped me survive mm-hmm. while we were out there. So I trust that he's fine out there. Yeah. And if he wants to take two weeks to go and be free, let him do it. Yeah. He's more than capable of taking care of himself. Yeah. And they didn't do that. No, there was no <laughs> way just, that they like, used that to their information. advantage to shape the narrative. No. From both perspe- perspectives. Perspectives, yeah. Like it could because have then very what actually much... came out could have made all of that feel so much more fun. Yeah. So much more fun information. Yeah. So that I could have sat here and been like, ooh, true crime, 
you know, suspense exactly. thriller instead of fucking whatever the hell we ended up Whatever with. the hell that was. But like, because there wasn't any more, there, it, we did not divulge into that kind of information. It just made it feel like, okay. Again, another and, throwaway thing. Yeah. We're literally spending two minutes on these things that are actually genuinely important that yeah. could really shape the narrative yeah. of the story. I think that if they would have gone with the narrative that Beverly is suspect of Simon mm-hmm. and Simon is just like, meh. Yeah. And then explain more into why both of those things occurred yeah that could have been such a better story it would have been so much better but instead uh, when, instead we're learning about and i don't know if you guys know this but we're spending half an hour if not close to an hour learning that simon loves not sorry uh gary loves trains yeah. and being an outdoor and survivalist loved, yeah. enthusiast so especially because more so we get to a point where they find gary's truck right hold on let me see we're not there yet. Hold on. Oh, shit. We're not, Even, are we? No, connecting to what you're saying, though, before we end up finding more information out about Gary, leading into what you're talking about, using this as a way to be suspect, Beverly, Bevy, Sissy Bev, <laughs> is suspect of Simon even more because Gary confided in her that he wanted to move out because he didn't like being with Simon anymore. He didn't I mean, like having right. Simon as a roommate. Why the fuck are you going to put these breadcrumbs there Mm -hmm. and then do nothing with them? I think, didn't we also, was this also the part where we learned that Gary's gay? No, that's way later. Way later. Okay. I was going to say, not that I thought that it would have been a good add in. You don't have to keep this in. Not that I thought it would have been a great add in. But if we had put that in the same area Uh as learning that like Simon didn't care that he was gone for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Simon also was going to be moving out. And we all find out that Gary's gay. Gay panic defense. Gay panic defense. Yeah. It's giving a panic defense. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so like it just keeps compounding itself if they had let it. Mm-hmm. Beverly immediately already being suspicious of Simon because Simon let essentially what she believes her brother be missing for almost three weeks. Mm-hmm. Simon not thinking it's a big deal because mm-hmm. he's been with Gary on these hikes and he's like, he's fine. And then all on top of that, now... We're finding out that Gary didn't want to live with Simon anymore because he didn't like Simon as a roommate Mm -hmm. and he's been missing for two weeks and Simon doesn't care. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And we're just not going to go into it. Guys. (laughs) Instead, we're going to... Why would you put it in the script? Yeah. We're going to, yet again, talk about how you love trains. I don't know if you guys knew this, but allegedly, this fucking guy loved trains. (laughs) And being outside. I mean, I guess that was the other thing. It wasn't even just the abandoned mines. They were also looking at like abandoned railroad tracks and yes, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Like that. He was going and looking at really right. cool shit. Right. Out but in the middle of the desert, but still. I Yeah. And then again, compounding on top of this, this is when Gary's truck is found. Yes. In a place that didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um. Well, I, I get, yeah, it doesn't make any sense because Simon says that it doesn't make any sense. Simon is the one who points out and it's just like, this is not where Gary would have parked his truck, which makes yeah. Beverly be like, how do you know that? But like, why, why do you think that? Why would we, you say why that? Why would you think that it wouldn't be parked there? But it's because according to Simon, he liked to go to like wooded areas mm-hmm. and whatnot, very secluded yeah. areas. Yeah. And Gary's truck was found like basically in the middle of the open desert. Yeah. But uh, like a, a big open road. Yeah. Basically kind of off to the side. Right. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, like a place that somebody who doesn't know how to hike would put it. Yeah. Like who doesn't like Simon? Like who doesn't know anything about the desert and wouldn't know not to put stuff out and there. And I would also, if I was Sissy Bev, ask the police, and this is something that they could have added in because Bevy is very suspicious of Simon. Mm-hmm. Be like, hey, is that happened to be the same area where Simon and Gary hiked? Because it would kind of make sense. You could have made the fucking connections, especially because we get introduced yeah to William Bill Salerno, a private investigator, Listen, who I swear to fucking God did nothing. I hate this guy. I'm just going to say it. I hate this guy. I was like, love the actor. He did great. Bless yeah, he was him. great. He was fantastic. Yeah. What the fuck was your point here? Who is that fucking character? Who? He was just here to tell us everything Beverly specifically did wrong. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Every fuck. And here's where it even pissed it me off more. It didn't make any sense to me. Because Beverly's the one who hired you, bitch. Why, yeah, why are you being mean to her? Why are you being mean to Sissy Beth? This needs understand. You need to be like a defense attorney. You need to be like, my client did nothing wrong, bitches. Yeah everything she did was right even if it was fucked up even if it was wrong <laughs> and it did and not stupid help with anything all i all i ever heard from him was yeah beverly got in the cop's way yeah beverly did this yeah beverly did that you know she made it really difficult to do anything i'm like then why the fucking let her go then yeah like, it hey, should have been i like, don't want you as my client it literally should have been like p 
P.I. Bill and then his lower third should have been hates Beverly. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Literally despises Beverly's existence what? because I was just like, why? why you she here? paid you. And you're just like, you know what? I, and you know not- what I really think? Fuck that lady. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> yeah. Okay. So even again, they created this character P.I. Bill as a means to i guess kind of be like an authority figure yeah. because he even talks about sometimes like oh yeah i've got the ins because i guess he used to be a cop or a detective or Makes something sense. like that yeah 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 like i've got the ins with the lead investigator and mm-hmm. you know or a cop or two or blah 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 <laughs> um but if he is going to be giving us information directly from investigators yeah don't then immediately have sissy bev give me the same, Say the fucking, same fucking information, information. yep yeah because like so when we find the truck this is where it first happens and as soon as it started happening i was like oh my god are you fucking kidding me this is the loves trains loves the outdoors yeah we're literally switching from the bit of this guy loves trains and the outdoors and stuff like that to the bit of let have let everyone knew and bill say the same fucking thing and gail and gail oh my god let's have all three of them say this and this is again where gail should have been the one giving us the the fucking expositionary information yeah not whatever the I don't understand why everybody's repeating. Anyway, anyway, but this is where we find out that Simon kind of gets out of the loop of, of a possibility unless he's a fucking weirdo Yeah. because whoever drove Gary's truck did so, I almost said pregnant because I literally wrote barefoot and pregnant in my, <laughs> but in parentheses, not <laughs> like it was two in the morning. I was really tired. It's I, okay. But yeah. Someone who was barefoot drove simon's truck there are bare footprints in the truck and then all around the truck uh that then lead out into the desert so that's that's the information we learn about the truck specifically we don't learn anything about there's like the fingerprints inside don't match with anyone in like codis or anything like that or even like local in uh, local databases um there's no hairs fibers nothing there is yeah. no information within that truck that could tell them who these footprints belong to Mm -hmm. uh and that's it and there's no sign of gary within the truck Mm -hmm. other than the fact that his rent money is still sitting in the truck Mm -hmm. like very much capable of seeing it so i think this is where bevy decides that she's like okay maybe simon isn't the suspect right because why would simon leave behind all of this money exactly especially if he's losing out on having uh unless he's the one who's moving out he's at least losing a roommate which means he's gonna have less money yeah and also it's just money so like duh right so it's just like if simon were the one to have done it he would have taken the money he would have taken a couple things that were in the car but also it just plays into the fact that whoever did do this is not i guess a member of society so that's why like they're barefoot in the desert barefoot in the desert and don't take money all right that's 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 it that's the notion and i'm like okay i mean like I i guess really feel like where they could have played it out too was if there was some we don't really get a background of simon we don't really understand like how simon and gary met we don't really get any of that stuff and i think that it would have been interesting oh no they met at a train thing yeah they met at a train thing i think that it would have been interesting though if maybe there was some sort of conversation that led to us believing that simon had money problems Mm -hmm. that simon has expensive taste in model trains something or because they live in nevada maybe he has a gambling problem yeah or like if like when gary's talking to bevy about gary just being like yeah he lost his job and he's just kind of been irritable and he just hangs around the house only now literally anything because then then i could have been like oh the money is still there immediately it's not simon it's not simon yeah like because it, i would have not needed anything else besides that to just be like oh something ne- very nefarious is going on yeah. that is not involved simon. someone who does not care who simon is as a person yeah someone who has no connection to him at all is the one involved in this yeah. this is not some i know this person they tricked me into something and now i'm lost in the desert this is i ran across someone that i don't know mm-hmm. who decided i gotta go right yeah because even with the oh the money was still there i'm still under with everything that they actually have given us i'm still under the impression okay whoever did hurt him could have been simon Mm -hmm. whoever did hurt him was not doing it because of money 
Yeah, they weren't. Yeah, they and weren't. if this entire time we have been told mm -hmm. Simon has money problems, Simon has a problem with money, mm -hmm. Simon lost his job, like you said, mm -hmm. something leading to the fact that Simon needs a good amount yeah. of money to get him until his next point. Yeah, and there's still money in there. Mm -hmm. Immediately, then I'm like, it is not Simon. I'm something else is sussed going out. Else. Yeah, I'm immediately like, oh shit. Yeah. Oh no. But instead, I'm Poor just like, Gary. oh, the something money's... happened to okay. Gary. Yeah, no, it's just okay. Cool, there's money in the car. I guess they weren't there to burglar burglarize Bur him. Burglar him. Yeah. yeah, they had it. They had so many. They had it. They did. They had so many. They needed fleshed somebody. out connections. Yeah, that they just decided to not act out. Yeah, on, act upon. And I'm so disappointed. Yeah, but uh, with all of this happening, PI Bill decides. Okay, if somebody was after Gary, not for his money. Maybe they were after him because of something that happened in his background. Mm -hmm. And so he decides to do like a full investigation into Gary's background. Mm -hmm. And this is where he finds some conversations that had happened between Gary and another gentleman. Mm -hmm. A part of the, I don't know if you know this, but he really likes model train. <laughs> and so it was some other guy who was also a part of the model train community. And they started a relationship. Mm -hmm. They were in a homosexual, homosexual, homosexual <laughs> loving relationship. <laughs> I love love. I we love love. I love love. I love gays. So P.I. Bill tracks this guy down and he's just like, hey, your boyfriend is missing. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, hey, don't say that out loud. <laughs> hey, shut the fuck up. Hey, shut the fuck up. Don't fucking say that. But he's just like grabbing him by the collar, shoving him in the house. Yeah, like he's just yeah, like, just like listen here, you Mexican. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Goes I mean, racist. Yeah, immediately. give it immediately. Yeah, be like, <laughs> I can condone racism, but I don't condone homophobia. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. But so PI Bill is just like, I know that you guys were boyfriends. He is missing. Did you have anything to do with this? And mm -hmm. he was just like, no. Mm -hmm. And again, <laughs> again, fucking be involved with anything else in this fucking movie yeah. besides telling us that he liked trains yeah. for the love of god i beg of you because even that again points to somebody did not want the money maybe it was the fucking boyfriend who didn't want to be outed maybe we could have had sissy bev come on and be like hey actually Maybe Gary wasn't moving out because he hated Simon. Maybe Gary was moving out to go be with his fucking lover. Yeah. And, and then his the lover didn't know that. Yeah. Nor wanted that right. because he didn't want to be out because this is small town Nevada. Right. Middle of the, you know, technically the Midwest, Western part of the United States. Not a lot of open mindedness happening. Yeah. So if Gary is kind of, you know, as it seems in La La Land. Yeah. And he's thinking, well, I love you. You love me. Let's just have a life together. That's the tism. And he shows up at this guy's house. Yeah. And this guy's like, bitch, no. Yeah. Why did we not? Why was this, uh, again, not fleshed out? There could out. have been a conversation between P.I. Bill and the boyfriend yeah. and been like, did you ever go on a hike with him and stuff like that? And if the guy said no, yeah. okay, you're ruled out. Yeah. Because there's no way that you would have even known then, yeah. like, where to put his truck. And we could have had, like, even if you didn't want to have to sit down and film anything, you could have done an audio recording. Literally just being like, P.I. Bill, being like, hi, this is Bill here talking with Redacted. Mm -hmm uh about the disappearance of gary hinge what well, would have been so fucking nice would have been like like uh when he has like what is it like wired if mm -hmm. pi bill was wired yeah and he's just like to protect him i decided to distort his voice and yeah. stuff like that and we have this guy's distorted voice yeah all muffled and stuff like that talking about how he never went on a hike with gary mm -hmm. he doesn't know anything about the nevada desert yeah. also maybe he was gone yeah when gary went missing something something yeah and also could have lended <laughs> into the fact of um well you know his roommate was saying that he was feeling a little bit that he seemed a little bit weird before mm -hmm. he left did you guys get into a fight or anything like that mm -hmm. because uh you know when he came back from his previous hike he was mm -hmm. weird did you guys fight about something during that time that he came back from his yeah. hike and the time that he went on his next hike where he went missing mm -hmm. the guy could have been like no but when i visited him or when we went out to lunch he was acting really weird with me too and he was saying something about boom that cabin mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah because we this is where because we find then out. out of nowhere we're talking gail is talking about yeah i was about to go on air and i get calls i get these emails and calls for some from some viewers who are telling me to go check out gary's blog how the fuck 
Oh, I'm so mad. I am so, hold on. <laughs> I am so mad. Bill, Bill, you need to fucking look at me with your That's goddamn eyes. Yeah. How in the fuck are you going to find out that this man is gay? Yeah. He's gay. You out him. You out him. You out his boyfriend. Yeah. You didn't know this man had a fucking blog? He didn't have blog. a blog? You didn't know he had a fucking blog? A fucking yeah. YouTube channel? Well, and here's my thing. Bevy has access to his laptop and he's not there. Why did she not give that to Bill? Why did, Why was Bill not in possession? Why were the cops not in possession? This, okay, even more. Why are the where are the where are the cops? Where are the cops? Where are the cops? Well, apparently they were doing some. They were they were looking for him. But they were like they were doing search and rescue. You only got more than like two cops to just look at. One some... guy goes searches and rescues, and the other guy just hey, looks at a laptop. To the apartment. I'm yeah. gonna go look through his shit. I'm gonna look through some stuff. But Pia Bill apparently allegedly did look through his shit enough to find the gay stuff. I'm looking at you, Pia Bill. I'm a little sussy, you Pia Bill. A little sussy of you. A little sussy of that because you yeah. can figure out that this man was gay, but you can figure out they had a he had yeah. a blog. You can figure it out, or if you did, it wasn't just shared to us, girl. Why the fuck is Bevy telling us about this? I don't know. Why? Why does? Why is it that Gail all of a sudden pops up, says this shit? First time I've seen her in like 20 minutes. But then we also then have we then have Sissy Bev come on say the same fucking thing. I'm so sick. I'm so sick of multiple people saying <laughs> the same people thing. People saying the same fucking thing. So they're blog. all saying the exact same thing. So yeah. on his blog, he had amassed about 50,000 subscribers, 50,000 followers. Mm-hmm. Go, Gary. Period. Period. Yeah. Get a bitch. 50K ain't nothing to It ain't nothing to, to show yeah, off. Yeah, it's great. Good you, Gary. He did amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but he would regularly post survival tips mm-hmm. hiking tips because i don't know if you guys know this he <laughs> is a bit of an outdoor survivalist enthusiast yes i don't know if you guys know that i don't know if you know that um and he would also post like i also don't know this but he really liked model trains yes so he would post about like when Both he would go on his things. travels yes and so a lot of his followers like not only used his stuff to like influence them to be able to go and like do outdoor enthusiasm mm-hmm. shit but they were also just like follow him this is when we start getting a whole bunch of them start saying that in the comments of his blog there was a lot of people saying like, oh, I bet he found it. Because mm-hmm. obviously he's been missing for a while. So they yeah. go back onto his last post. Well, and this is where we, or this is where, I f- <laughs> where we find out that Bevy has his computer because she's talking about how she gets a call from a friend saying, hey, I just heard about, you know, uh, Gary's blog. And apparently there's some stuff on there that you should take a look at. There's a lot of people making comments and stuff like that. She goes on his laptop. She has access to his laptop, but she goes on his laptop and is getting just flooded with notifications of comment after comment after comment after comment on his like last blog post mm-hmm. or some shit talking about oh my god i bet he found it oh my god i can't believe he actually went out there i wonder what happened i bet it was aliens or some shit like that i bet the government got him that mm-hmm. kind of thing and so now we're like okay well what the fuck's going on so we're looking at his like last three blog posts blog posts basically not for long apparently yeah um thanks baby so we're we're seeing like little clips and stuff like that from from his blog about like the videos that he made and then we finally get to his last one the next to last one yeah that he made where it's his last true expedition out that we get to see Mm -hmm. uh technically Technically. on his blog yeah and it is where he's starting to smell smoke Mm -hmm. which indicates that there's a fire lit somewhere right which is very weird when he's been walking into the desert for like three days yeah ooh, ooh. well not only that and i'm assuming again because i don't know if you guys know this but he's an outdoor enthusiast and <laughs> as an outdoor enthousi- enthusiast i do feel like he feels some sort of responsibility mm-hmm. as somebody who treks in these very remote areas that yes. nobody goes to of hey maybe i should help preserve this land by making sure that things don't fucking catch on fire yes or that if they are caught on fire that i can call for help yes like as a if it's a natural wildfire yeah. to just be like this feels odd yeah why why is someone out here yeah and why is out someone out here so carelessly as to light a fire in a very dry mm. environment it's an and like i get it gets cold at night bundle, bundle up, up bitch, bitch. <laughs> i don't I got nothing else. I'm like, don't light a fire. There's so much dry brush out here. Get a blanket. You're going to fucking light the desert on fire. Socks. Fucking just wear a wool coat. I don't yeah. know. It doesn't get that cold. Yeah. But literally bundle that bitch. I don't understand. But with it, he's, he follows the smell of the smoke. Fair enough. Because he's inquisitive. He's right. like, well, I don't know what this is. Yeah. And I want to find out. Like you said, he might feel like a sense of responsibility right. for being so far out there. Yeah. And he comes across a makeshift cabin like sticks like mm-hmm. a homeless shelter basically yeah. just like something that is makeshift and just put I'm up i dude dead ass it looked to me a little bit bigger 
And it looked exactly like the Shrek outhouse. Uh, you know what's so funny? Is that what you were thinking? Yeah. Too? Yeah. It looked like Shrek, outhouse, Shrek yeah. outhouse with like a little, uh, like a carport. Yeah. Yeah. Which like, why does it have a carport? It just does. It just does. It just does. Um, But Gary explains that coming upon this cabin and the longer that he stood at the cabin and was kind of just being around it, he felt very uneasy, Mm -hmm. like an impending doom was coming for him. It just didn't feel very good. So he skedaddled, Scooby-Doo skedaddled out of Mm -hmm. there and was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. However, he did not get footage of the cabin itself. He didn't get footage of his expedition. Yeah, this is one of those parts of the expedition where he wasn't... Because he was, like, recording some of it. But this was not yeah. the part where he was recording. No. He was, just, he was like, just like, oh, what is this? Yeah, he's just like, I guess I'll just go I'm gonna take go a to look bed. at this. Because, like, he doesn't know what this is. So, yeah. like, I wouldn't film something that I'm coming upon no. that I don't know anything about. I want to be able to pay attention. Right. And so it would make sense that he found this thing, didn't feel that great about it, and left. Yeah. And then he went to bed, came home. But what ends up happening is Gary goes home. And Gary posts. Well, you forgot. Oh shit! When he when he wakes up the next morning, <gasps> oh my god, in yeah. his tent. So that night he went to sleep, and he was hearing some weird things happening outside of his tent. Yeah, and he was like, so scared that he slept with his shoes on. Yeah, yeah. Which I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, this sucks. That's so sad. But when he woke up the next day, there was barefoot footprints mm-hmm. outside of his tent. Yes. So. Obviously, we're going to make the connection. Well, okay, cool. the same person. Yeah, so whoever was at this cabin is the same one who walked around his tent. Yeah. the same one who did something to him nefarious enough that they took his truck yeah. and put it somewhere else. That part doesn't make sense to me. No. In the middle of the desert, three three days out this one direction. How the fuck did you get back to his truck and then move it? How did you find his truck? Whatever. See, and then we're not going to talk about it. Well, and also, going back to the fact that we had been told, because I don't know if you know this, but... <laughs> <laughs> as an outdoor enthusiast, <laughs> model do you know this? I don't know if it was mentioned. I don't know if it was mentioned. Well. <laughs> but he, because he would find these abandoned railroad tracks, and because he would find these abandoned mines, why not have the smoke coming from one of these abandoned mines? Something. And then when he goes there, he can see the fire. Mm-hmm. And he maybe sees a shadow Something. and gets freaked out. And that's why he goes back. I have to say this. They did so many wide shots while he's out in the middle of the desert, specifically on his uh, his last venture that mm-hmm. we see mm-hmm. on the blog. Why not? And I looked closely. Me too. And I, had my, I had my partner also looking closely yeah. too to see if he could see anything. Yeah. I was looking so hard so to see. So hard. Is somebody following him? Yeah. I wanted it to be Phoenix 97. Yeah. 96? 97? 90. Phoenix tapes. The Phoenix tapes. I wanted it to be the Phoenix tapes so bad. Yeah. Where it's just some ominous shit. Yeah. Going on in the background that if you're not paying attention, we did get kind of jump scared a little bit when he's, he runs upon the sheep. Me too. <laughs> and then he looked over and I saw somebody moving. I was like, somebody scratched up there. Somebody scratched <laughs> moving. And then we go back and it's all the sheep. Yeah. I was like, oh. I literally, I was like, oh my God, wake up sheeple. Why am I like this? Like, this is, that's so stupid. Okay. It's just the sheep is fine. But they had, again, perfect opportunity Mm -hmm. to set that shit up yeah because if you want it to be like supernaturalistic horror kind Mm -hmm. of elements yeah it's right there yeah it's right there yeah i don't know anyway yeah so there's just a couple of those things but yeah so we get that okay cool dope awesome now we know for sure simon wasn't the one that did anything it's this barefoot person out in the middle of the desert cool dope awesome right weird whatever whatever we're gonna move on apparently yeah gary goes home gary makes a blog post saying that um you know when he was out there he found this thing he didn't film it it gave him the spooks he wasn't really a big fan of it so he left and he came home uh if i were him i would be like let me give myself a couple days to kind of just chill the fuck out Mm -hmm. because that kind of freaked me out Mm -hmm. he does say that he's basically just like yeah it really scared me and i wasn't a big fan of it yeah and uh, i don't plan on going back out there he immediately gets bullied oh my god on the internet his fucking followers are just like you're fucking lying they literally said you're a liar basically you're just looking for that clout where you're trying to be those scary yeah. story type ghost hunter literally the burger people King foot lettuce burger literally King that guy let- that guy or these people who go out into like desert mines and, yeah. and like go into them and there's all these chains like swinging back and forth in, yeah. the, in the middle of it and you see a shadow a lot in the background of <gasps> like, here's what so here's the thing though this is where i immediately got upset because 
I'm pretty sure this is like verbatim something that happened in real life. Hold on. Well, yeah. I want to get to, I think I want this to be the conversation that happens at the end. Okay. Because I got so, as soon, because when I saw that, yeah, where he made a post saying, I found this thing, I didn't film it, it freaked me out, and he got bullied, I immediately knew who it was. Okay. And I was so pissed yeah, off we'll that this was that. based on a real person. Yeah, at the I was end like, of you it. You fuckers. Because, this is so fucked up. Yeah. It gave me sacrament yeah for you that's exactly what i was was so pissed off i got so mad that my wrist hurt i was like yeah anyway yeah um so bevy sissy bev sissy bev is obviously reading all of these things yes again we have pi bill telling us that he hates women and that he especially (laughs) specifically bevy (laughs) because she is the dumbest woman is what he said for he's basically just like all women are dumb especially beverly Yeah. yeah bevy is number one but i understand where she was coming from but she did a dumbass thing, and I'm very happy that you pointed out that she was doing all this on his laptop. Mm-hmm. Bevy, do you not have a fucking phone? Do you not have your own laptop? Can you not go to the public library? Something. Why the fuck are you touch? Why are you touching, Why are you touching his touching laptop? It? As soon as you, as soon as you knew, oh, this was happening. Hey, what's up? Ring, ring. Hi, cops. I have some new information for you. Please come take my brother's laptop mm-hmm. to check for stuff. No, and said she finds the she finds out about the blog before even the cops do. And so she is on uh, Gary's computer going through the blog posts, looking at them. Yeah, like from his... From his laptop. His laptop on his... What is it called? Like his dashboard. Yeah. Like where you can edit and everything. Yeah. And what does she do? Listen. I understand. Listen. This is where I'm with the PI. Because like, if she has zero haters, I'm dead. So Sissy Bev accidentally Mm. deletes Mm -hmm. his last blog post. That apparently was supposed to be very informative. Mm-hmm. This is where I have a problem. Now with Sissy Bev, because I, I I kind of agree with P.I. Bill. She is a dumb bitch. But... This is a dumb bitch moment. This is a dumb bitch moment. Just the one. Just the one, actually. Just the one moment. Yeah. But what I don't understand... Maybe I should understand at this point with this fucking movie, because none of, <laughs> none of <laughs> Let the Let me lose my brain cells. Let, Let me, me go just, down to just the one brain cell, yeah, actually. The, apparently, the one brain cell that made this movie. Yes. And be like, okay, where where am I in the mind? Why? So we're understanding that Sissy Bev deleted this post. Mm. And then we keep getting this dumb ass screenshot of the first frame of the fucking video that she quote unquote deleted. deleted. Yeah. Permanently deleted. And we're getting the one screenshot of the first frame of the video. Mm-hmm. They showed it like five times. Oh my God. Yeah. They kept showing it. And then there's all of this exposition about how, yeah, in the video, he seems really scared. Yeah. He seems really like on Shaken edge. up. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like you're really messed Leave him it up. Leave there. That's it. Leave us with the one screenshot and that exposition and move the fuck on. Yeah. But they literally show us because his last video is him uh, saying that he's going to go back out there. That he's going to go back out there. He's like, hey, guys, that, I, I heard you like, all. I heard you. I heard your go. comments. And, you know, a lot of people are really upset with me that I don't want to go back out there. So I'm going to need a couple days to get prepped. And then we're going to head back out there. And I'll be sure to film it for you guys so that everyone can see what it is. He, and it, he even and this is why I appreciate this, because it's, it's actually kind of funny because the guy in real life, I think, does this shit. Mm-hmm. The guy who plays Gary. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just like, I'm not going to tell you where I'm going mm-hmm. because I don't advocate for people going out into the middle of the desert without being fully prepared. Yeah. So unless it's something that you feel comfortable doing, then you can go and do it. But I'm not going to give you the exact location so that no, not people aren't f- trying to flock to this and get hurt. Which I'm like, that's I like that. You yeah. are the only person in this film in this film where I've been like, oh, you know, I like you. I love Gary. Because I don't know if you know this. People like Gary. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Gary's a nice guy. <laughs> Gary's a nice guy. That's likable. Yeah. <laughs> so because of this, we, okay, we think that the, that's it. That's it for footage of Gary and his existence. We think, okay, cool. Well, I still got what? 20 minutes left in this fucking movie. What what else is going to happen? Uh, jump scare. Gary's hand is found severed in his backpack. His backpack. Placed by a couple campers out in the middle of the desert. Yep. Who just find it next to their campsite. Yeah. It literally is placed it's next placed to them. There. What and the it's placed there. What's wrong with this guy? I don't know. He's fucking gross. He's weird. Yeah, I He's don't like weird. it. Anyway, but we know that it's placed there. And we know that it was done so on purpose because, first of all, the last actual recording of Gary's is in his hand. Literally. Mm -hmm. It's literally in his hand. Um, His camcorder is still attached to his hand. And it has been apparently severed for like five weeks. Yeah. 
So that's basically he went out into the desert and basically immediately died. Yeah, basically was, was just killed. gone. Yeah, yeah. And then the back hand was put in somewhere clean cut. Apparently, clean cut off. Yeah, wasn't ripped off or anything like that, which yeah. would indicate barbarianism. Apparently, I don't know why we made this like such a big deal that it was cleanly cut. Yeah, I don't know. I don't it was know. a bit odd of yeah. a decision. Anyway. Yeah, but yeah, it clean cut put in backpack backpack was taken somewhere yeah found by campers uh hand is five weeks old yeah and so now we're obviously about to go in oh, now we're we're about to go into actually watching his final night but yeah. this was where the acting that the actress who plays to see bev does mm. in this specific moment i wish she had been doing the entire time i agree that's not something that we've touched on yet but the acting is really bad that besides acting could be gary be besides gary because He's just a dude. He he is doing what he does. This guy, I think they just saw him and plucked him and was just like, hey, just do what you're going to do. But we're going to also add this one thing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Because he does this. I went on his Instagram. He just does this shit. Yeah. It's just him. Yeah. This is him for real. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was acting or anything. This is just what he does. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Everyone else could have done so much better. So much better. Except for, I think Simon's nonchalantness was fine. Eh. I think it was okay. Yeah. But like even that. I but was like, mm. so when we're about to watch the video, we have before it starts to see Bev talk about how in the very beginning of the video, you can hear, I, I don't remember what, exactly what she says, but it's almost like you can hear the na- na- naivety, naivety, mm-hmm. the hopefulness in his voice. Mm-hmm. And as soon as she heard that, she had to stop the video and stop watching. She can watch it. Yeah. And the actress who plays Sissy Bev, like genuinely looks like she's about to break down. She looked like she was very distressed. Like that. I was like, like this girl. was a very disturbing thing for her to, to talk to about. Watch, and yeah. I don't know if maybe the actress has gone through something like that. Yeah. Or maybe she was thinking of like a final moment moment of somebody that's departed in her life and like like she can't get through watching a video of them or something like that because she genuinely looked it felt like real grief i really wish that that because this entire time you're just getting a woman Mm -hmm. talking about a man Mm -hmm. in a manner in which Mm -hmm. this happens to be her brother kind of like dramatic yeah yeah but then at this point that's when you see real grief it felt like her brother yeah yeah like and i wish it had been that way the whole film yeah yeah and i mean i'm glad i got it yeah i just like, wish i wish it had, had been more the whole thing yeah. and i and i think the actress who plays sissy bev needs to give herself more credit because girl if you can pull that off literally in your final shot yeah we never see sissy bev we again never see her again if you can pull that off literally as your final shot i know you could have pulled it off the whole movie mm-hmm. you have got this yes why did you not give it to me yeah and maybe it was just the direction of maybe. the whole thing oh, maybe she yeah maybe she just didn't have the opportunity the direction of the rest of this fucking movie fucking white God. fucking atrocious so like i get it but like kudos to her yeah literally give her, her good. flowers it, she did great and to be quite honest having her reaction be like that mm-hmm. made me so much more invested in the final shot because who i would have fucking thought that if you had somebody who was acting correctly <laughs> in a fucking moment it would actually make me connect to the rest of the fucking movie. i literally felt scared i was like oh shit what the fuck are we about to watch and then i was Freaked disappointed i got i did get Ugh. i did and then i was disappointed and then i was like what is happening like, what the fuck's going on right anyway so now we're gonna get into gary's final night yeah the police release the footage to bev with the uh well with the ability for her to release it to the public if she'd like yeah so that possibly people can find it might have a better sense of finding gary because yeah. maybe somebody knows who this man is yeah that is in gary's final moments uh who, I, I don't no know one who. knows who that man is nobody knows that man that man doesn't even know who he is girl anyway but yeah only so god knows only god knows who that man is and even he's just like i don't really know i don't know. know i don't know whose man i don't want to claim him he's not <laughs> is this your man I'm gonna stick beside him. But yeah, but we get into because it's been released to the public. We get into the actual events that happen in Gary's final moments. Yeah. So I'm gonna kind of run through it as quickly as they did. Yeah. We can just run through it. Yes. Yep. What happens? A lot. <laughs> Gary? But also nothing. So Gary- this this whole part first section. I had so much anxiety. Gary gets out into the there desert. Was so much hope. Garrett gets out into the desert. He's talking about how he's going from, you know, point A to point B. He's be like, okay, cool. I got three days to get in, three days to get out. I'll see you guys. You know, we're going to just do this shit. We're watching him kind of walk through. That's where I think this is where we see the sheep. Mm-hmm. We see some sheep walking or around. Maybe that was earlier. Maybe that was earlier. Well, because we do what see I, some stuff. What we I see have, some landscape 
videos. Yeah. And then we're cutting to him using infrared on his camera. Because he says that he smelled smoke. Yeah. And it's becoming nighttime. Yeah. And then there is a pop-up of text saying that Gary switched to infrared in order to walk around at night. Yeah. Because he wants to walk. He doesn't want to be seen. This is also where I was like, stop putting these breadcrumbs if you're not going to do anything with it. Yeah. Because they specifically point out that he's using infrared, which is not detectable to the human eye. Yeah. Why would you point that out if who we're about to encounter, spoiler alert, is a deformed human? Yeah. Not a supernatural deformed human. Just some guy. Just some dude. Just some dude. Just some man in the desert. Why the fuck do I care? You could have just said, he's using an infrared camera. Mm -hmm. He's using night vision. Yeah. That's what you could have said. But instead, you have to point out that it's infrared. Infrared so that a human eye cannot see it. Okay. But we're getting out there. It's nighttime. Already anxiety. I'm I'm having anxiety. I'm scared. Because we're walking around at night and I can't see more than two feet in front of me. Yeah. He's looking at like tree branches. In front of me. We're we're watching a movie. That's what I'm saying. In front of me. I can't see two feet in front of me. (laughs) In front of him. In front of me. (laughs) And I'm scared. I'm a little scared. And he rolls up. He starts hearing ominous music playing outside. I'm not going to lie, dude. It just kind of sounded like fallout music. I was going to say, no offense, but I literally had the TV down so low. Yeah. Because I didn't want to scare myself because then I would have scared my kid. Yeah. So it was on like four. Yeah. Like it was so, and I I had the captions. It was just like ominous music yeah. or something like that. And I was just like, oh, that's scary. I yeah. wish I would have known what that was. No, it just sounds like if you've ever played fallout, it was just that music. Like so on it's a only record with like player. an old radio. Old radio, something. like record okay. player with like like the, like the one that has like the big the big megaphone looking thing okay coming out of yeah. it yeah i don't know i don't know what those are called i don't remember anyway it sounds like that okay and i'm just like okay so basically finds- like like an in inception that french song yeah that's what it sounds like uh, exactly yeah, yeah yeah that that thing that's just what's playing into the desert and i'm like okay yeah that is ominous i would also be afraid if i heard french <laughs> Oh no. I'm just not thinking about it. I'm just gonna keep laughing. Okay. We uh. uh, <laughs> uh okay, we have to move on. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so hold on. Oh my god. <sighs> um, but yeah, he's hearing he's hearing random music playing out in the desert, and he's kind of just following it. He's yeah. just going back to where he was. I think he had. That's what he said. He had left markers in the desert and he's kind of showing us the markers along the way so that we know where it is that he's going. He's been there before. He marked it when he was there, when he had been there in the daytime. And so he's just kind of making his way back. We finally get upon, we we come upon the The cabin cabin. itself. Yeah. Okay, cool. Dope. Awesome. There's like a barrel on fire. Is it really? Hold on. No. Actually, I don't remember much about what happened. Actually, yeah. I just remember seeing a cabin. That's it. Okay, maybe that's all that's happening. Yeah. Maybe I'm just remembering that from something It's else. just like a little Shrek outhouse. It's a little, little Shrek thingy. outhouse. Yeah, just kind of chilling. Um, we're there. We're looking at it. He's yeah. spending a lot of time looking around at it. Yeah. I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm also spending a lot of time looking around. I hate that shit because I'm like, I'm looking. I'm yeah. like, what's, what's over there? What's, what's happening? Yeah. Um, we hear crunching happen behind him. Yeah. So he turns around. He's like, oh, bitch. Yeah. What the fuck's going on? Uh, nothing's there. No. Great. That's nice. Fine. Turns back cabin feels weird now it feels odd feels odd something weird is it felt i i got goosebumps yeah i was like "Mm." immediately i recognized that like something was weird something shifted i was like something's wrong something's very weird here yeah now uh, my my partner didn't see it yeah and obviously the first time i watched it i didn't see it yeah 
Uh, but Gary is just pointing that camera at that cabin because I think he can also he's he conveying that he feels something's weird. Yeah, what the hell's going on? And then all of a sudden, there's apparently just a man standing in front of in t- into the middle of the cabin. Yeah, and he just crouches down. All of a sudden, he crouches down. He cra- and you're like, oh fuck, he was standing there the whole time. It reminds me of you ever seen those pictures of like Spot the Leopard? Yes, and you're just like. Where oh the fuck shit! Is this leopard. Yeah, and then you see it, and it all you get so scared. Yeah, all of a sudden you're just like, oh, I fully recognize that there's a leopard. Be like, damn, I did not see that. And yeah, so when that happened, I like rewound it a little bit, and I yeah. was like, can I see if the man is there? And you can, you can. Once when you, you go back, know that he's there, yeah. If you rewind, if you're looking at the cabin, and that like if you rewind it to where Gary's looking at the cabin first, turns around, and he comes back. Yeah. The reason why it feels ominous is because he is now standing there. He's standing right there. He's just standing there, and you can. He see hadn't him. been standing there, no. which is why it was just kind of like, oh, eerie cabin. Yeah. And then when you look back at it, you're like, now it's scary. Yeah. Why is it scary? It's because my fucking brain can recognize, hey, there's a person standing there. Yeah. You may not see. I see it. Yeah. But you may not see it. Yeah. That was really good. And that's where they should have ended it. And that's where it should have ended. Because Gary, upon seeing the man crouch down, points his camera at the ground and you see his hand. Yeah. That's where it should have ended. That's where it should have ended. Is that where it ended? No. No. It decides to go on for what? Seven more minutes? Seven more fucking minutes. Because what happens? (sighs) Camera cuts out. Camera cuts back on to man running at him with a machete a machete and gary just starts firing his gun into into air gary don't know where the a, man went like where where did gary have a gun well i mean gary explains that he was gonna take a firearm with him did he yeah when oh, he was talking fuck. about going back out there he was just I like i need to get that. prepared for a little bit and i'll be sure to bring my firearms this time just in case oh because he doesn't take it every time oh yeah so he but I he was totally taking it that time that yeah no he was bringing his fire so i was so time. confused i was like where the fuck he just get this Be like homie from? just had a gun yeah where'd that come from i'm not gonna lie dude even like now knowing that he said he was gonna take his arm mm-hmm. why did he decide to take a fucking like literally 1780s recreation I don't like know. revolutionary war ass shit my gun. partner was literally just like was that a world war ii gun it li- <laughs> thank you it literally looked like something out of the fucking ancient times it did not look new it was like the first gun ever invented yes what the what fuck are you was doing that? yeah what was that i don't know it gave i found this at a mine shaft and i refixed it and it can fire bullets again huh i don't know Anyway, but so, he's firing then, his gun at nothing. He, but, bre- he breaks the tree. Rude. I know. I saw the, the branch fall off. But Fuck. then it cuts out, I think, and it cuts back. Well, I won't say that every single time because I don't actually know when the cut in, cut out comes back. But it's cutting in and cutting out to different clips. And so mm-hmm. like the next clip we see, the guy, I guess, hurt him with the machete on his leg. Or he, he like ran like a, into something. Yeah, he's got a cut on his leg. He got a pretty good leg. cut. Yeah. And then like the next scene is... The guy is just like looking around for him with the machete. Yeah. And then we're cutting back. The next one is Gary is just like walking around, which I'm like, dude, at this point, find your fucking markers and get the fuck Literally out of there. Literally leave. What are you doing? I didn't understand. What are you doing? Like you have a gun and this guy doesn't look like he moves fast. Leave. Yeah. He used most of his energy running at you with the machete. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's not where the shenanigans fucking end, no. though. No. Cut out, cut in. Man has a torch now? He has a torch. He had enough time to go back to his cabin and get a torch. Where's the machete? And we're running around the, like, four trees in the desert. What in the Scooby-Doo is happening? Literally, what in the Scooby-Doo is going on? It was uh, so ridiculous. I, I did like, not understand. I was like, okay, what? Like, when it got to the point where the guy had the torch, that's when I was like, I'm over this. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. I, I was, was like, what the fuck is going on? I was so a little what on edge. What is the plot going on? I was a little on edge up until that point. And then all yeah. of a sudden I saw this man had a torch and I was like, I'm done. Yeah. I was like, no, I don't know what the hell's I going on. I no longer care. I know what's going to happen to Gary and I feel really bad, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah. But like, at this point, just get him. So cut out, cut in. It's still the guy finally snatches Gary. Yeah, he finally comes. And the at last him. frame that we see is a very distorted image of the man's face, which yeah. was like half looked like got burnt by acid. Yeah, he looked like he was like burned. Also had a stroke. One eye bald. Yeah, it was very bizarre. He yeah. kind of looked like sloth from the Goonies. It was giving like the hills have eyes. Yes, it was which kind of makes sense because like. He's supposed to be in the Nevada desert. We know that they did a lot of fucked up stuff with nuclear weapons out there. Right. People lived out there. People got nuclear fallout. It is what it is. But like, yeah. Okay. And so that's because he comes at him with the machete where I guess to understand that. And also that's where the video ends that Mm. that's when Gary's hand gets cut off. Yes. And we're also going to assume that Gary's dead. Yeah. We're going to assume Gary died. 
at the hands of this man. I'm going to say rest in peace eternally to that man. Yeah, ripe. I'm going to say it. Because I liked Gary. He was cute. He didn't do nothing wrong. He really loved nature. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you guys know he this. He was an outdoor enthusiast. And he loved trains. And, and he was really nice. He was really nice. Yeah. So All great qualities. I would say that that is very good yeah. requirements for a rest in peace eternally to yes. Mr. One Gary Syringe. What's his last name? Hinge. Hinge. Yeah, syringe. <laughs> Gary Hinge. Gary yeah. Syringe. Gary Syringe. Um, And that's that. The end of it is them saying that basically gary rip. has never been found yeah that's all that they have they don't they've they did the whole search the desert kind of thing they can't find well, him not the entire desert but but they did the, they, the they searched for the they searched through the desert that they could get to yeah um bevy and simon make up yeah they're to fine. a point where simon is just like you know i see as a big sister now yeah that's cute, cute. i'm trauma bonding you know yeah. we all gotta do fine. it some, sometimes you know she lost her brother he lost a roommate it's basically the same basically thing. the same thing. you know God. <laughs> same same um yeah um, and then this is where they're saying like hey you know obviously don't try and go out and look for this but we do know several people have yeah tried that, to go find gary that there was a crew of students or something like that who like were students. making a concerted effort yeah to they, go were, out and they find wanted him. to make a documentary about it and it should be released and it had yeah. like 2020 or 2021 something, or something like, like that, that. Yeah. so i'm assuming that was that's the, the second one the second one yeah. which we'll watch yes because i'm interested to see what i'm interested on. i'm wondering if they did any better yeah to be quite honest if they focused more on the spooky yeah desert elements. so you said that this was based off of a that i have on here that you said it was based off of a real story yes so i got really upset when I realize that this is based off of a person named Kenny Veach. Okay. He used to make YouTube videos where he would go and explore mine shafts and parts of the Nevada desert that were kind of abandoned. Mm -hmm. And he, I don't know if he made a video or a blog post or something. And obviously I'm not remembering this like fully. And I could just be making it to where like, oh yeah, it's the exact same thing as what happened with Gary. Right. But I could be conflating things. But essentially from what I remember, because this was back in like 2014, 2013 2014 mm -hmm. it goes on the news that this hiker is missing mm -hmm. this guy named kenny beach and his girlfriend is saying that she thinks that maybe he went and unalive to himself because he had really bad depression mm -hmm. um it also could have been that he just fell into a sinkhole or a mine shaft because there's a lot of those out there that you can get really hurt in or he just got lost in the desert and perished mm -hmm. but a search and rescue effort was being made no he was never found that kind of thing oh However, he had a YouTube channel. Okay. And he oh. would show, um, you know, the mine shafts in the Nevada desert and stuff right. like that. He mm -hmm. made either a community post or a follow up video talking about how he came upon a mine shaft or a cave or something that had really weird energy about it mm -hmm. to the point where he was afraid of it. it. He's, I think it was like either he said it or someone said that it was like vibrating. Oh, okay. And something ominous was going on inside of it. And he got bullied hmm. for not showing footage of it, for trying to seek out, basically be clout, seek clout out clout, chasing. clout chasing yeah. to to compete with these people who are starting to flood YouTube <clears throat> with the whole, I'm going to go look at these spooky yeah, caves these and stuff like that. Yeah, these people who go to abandoned places. Exactly. Yeah. M meanwhile, this man's been doing this for a while. He was a survivalist right. guy. Right. He liked doing this just in general. He liked spreading the message of going out and exploring in nature safely. Right. That kind of thing. And so he was just like, okay, you know, heard. I'll go back out there and I'll find it again. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through it. It can't be that scary. I just felt, you know, a little uncomfortable by it. But it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and that's the last time anybody ever heard from him. Oh. And he has never been found. There's no footage of anything from him. Mm. Nothing. He's just gone. Um, and a lot of people have it. And But the, the cave itself was near Nellis, the Air Force Base. Oh. which is also kind of like heavily tied into Area 51. I mean, would it be so suspect to think that they are using the tunnel systems? Not at all. Like, no, it would not be suspect that they're hiding. I mean, I, I know that uh, there's a lot of countries who hide like nuclear weapons and things like yeah. that in caves. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me that he came upon something, not nefarious, but just some, something that he wasn't as a citizen supposed to come upon. Yeah. And well, the military I think, took care of him in a way of like maybe... I mean, I don't think that there is any... Um, reason to disbelieve his girlfriend. She knew him the best. So mm -hmm. if she's going to sit there and say, I wouldn't be surprised if he went out into the desert where he felt at peace and just died. I mean, okay. I wouldn't be, you know, I don't think that that's unfair yeah. to assume. I also don't think that it would be unfair to assume that he did get hurt. Mm -hmm. I mean, because like your luck can only last so long. Yeah, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. It's like 
something you find that, yourself in one bad spot yeah. and that's it it's like people who like surf their entire lives and then they die by drowning exactly like yeah. like just one big wave hits you nature and is you, nature nature is nature nature's gonna nature and sometimes it doesn't give a fuck if you got 15 plus years dealing with the nature that you're you've been dealing with no, it's nature it's just like it's just the way of life you got yeah. stuck in a rock or you fell down and you broke your leg yeah. or you ran out of food and got turned around or it was a really sunny day and yeah. you didn't prepare properly that's on you you happened upon some snake that you weren't supposed to happen upon you yeah. got bit literally anything he kind of got bit by a bug yeah he could have got he could have literally cut himself on a rock and bled to death yeah i mean literally a carotid artery cut it takes what 30 seconds yeah. to die yeah who's to say that he didn't slip slice himself and just perish yeah but i was quite upset to know that this as because i don't think that a lot of people that they I've, use that part as a part of so, the narrative of this movie yeah it's i don't know if like the whole kenny veach thing is so like uh not niche but like so kind of not a part of internet history so you like it's not niche. so it might be so niche to know that yeah like only like a certain i mean group granted, of individuals like you know could about say, it like, oh, only a million people know but like a million and seven billion is not enough not enough yeah yeah it's not a lot of people yeah it retrospectively yeah. so it's just but like to know but as, it was as soon as i saw his video where he was talking about yeah you know sorry guys i hear your comments and like they're talking about him getting bullied i'm mm-hmm. like is this fucking kenny beach yeah and it wasn't even kenny beach i was like is this that one guy who went missing yeah and it i think it was okay i think that whoever made this movie was highly um influenced mm-hmm. by these details it kind of just went rogue and just it. like revolved an entire story around that one part that specific thing where okay. man went into desert with no other intentions than to be a survivalist, got bullied on the internet because people are fucking awful. Yeah. Uh, and essentially went out there and died. Hmm. And if that's not the case, what a weird coincidence. Yeah. That's Two? so bizarre. <laughs> Two? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. What, what was that one thing? If I had a nickel. If I had a nickel for every time I heard about some man who had no nefarious intentions being on the internet go out and die in the desert, I'd have two nickels, which wouldn't be a lot, but it is weird that it happened twice. Yeah. Yeah so yeah um what'd you give this though out of five like a two that's what i was gonna say if i'm being nice if i'm being generous uh and it's only a two because literally just from the part of bevy being grief stricken to the guy crouching and that made it gary putting his thing down yeah that was yeah that's great that's great if they if they literally just snipped that and put it on tiktok Ooh, so many people will go and watch the movie. do great. Yeah. And then be highly disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say a two. Mm-hmm. One and a half, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm being like for reals. Yeah. If it was the story that we wanted it to be, <laughs> I probably would have gave it like a three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. I wouldn't have changed the acting that much, but I th- no. I think that you can get away with, I would. I would don't want to say bad acting. I'll say amateur acting. Mm-hmm. If you can get away with amateur acting, if your writing is good. And the fact that this is set up as a documentary style with some B-roll, that is very, you know what? I'm not going to say it's very easy because I don't know. But I am going to say that they had the opportunity to, to make this a lot it. better yeah. than it than it could have been. Yeah. I mean, because like, I think was. of like actual documentaries that we watch of like true crime and thriller and things like mm-hmm. that. And like none of these people are actors and they're very awkward in front of a camera. Yeah. It would not have been so far fetched to believe that these are just awkward individuals in front of a camera right. or people trying to rethink about something that happened, you know, years ago. Yeah. Because not only are they having to relive a trauma and yeah. talk about a loved one that is potentially perished in a sad way. Like they're having to go through that grief. Mm-hmm. They're also nervous because they're on camera. Exactly. They're having to having be to like, talk about this really yeah. tough, raw thing. Yeah. Yeah. And also, why the fuck was Sissy Bev in like 15 different Oh my God. Where rooms? the fuck was she going? Where was she? What why was didn't she we doing? just sit down and do one interview? I thought... Girl like, was just traveling. Yeah. She, it was literally just like... She was the only one who kept moving around. Yeah. Oh, except for... No. No, yeah, she was. I was thinking about the P.I., but we see him in the car sometimes. Yeah, P.I. was like, like, like driving around and stuff like that. It was yeah. like they kind of were just like hanging out with him on the one day that they Yeah, that they had with him. him with him. Yeah. And then Gail, she switched outfits a couple of times, but I think it was just because like... She's working. Right. Yeah. So and they like, would like follow up interviews and right. stuff like that. And but like Simon, Gail... Uh, but uh, fucking Bebby was just like... Boop, she boop, was like boop, in boop, boop. I'm like, girl, where are you locations? going? I was like, damn, world traveler there. Yeah, what do you do? I don't know. But and why are they so comfortable just coming to see you? Yeah. Why not also just do it over the web? Yeah, why was Gail the 
you know what i don't know <laughs> i could go into it i don't know but yeah it was not we'll watch the second one yes that'll be hopefully the next, that'll, that'll be, be better the next episode and yeah. hopefully it'll be better but this one was very disappointing it was it could have been so much better yeah there was a lot of really it could have been so much better because they had it they had it and i want to give credit to the writer and the director absolutely and the producer all of these people everyone who involved behind the scenes had it and did a great job i'm never gonna knock them for that they no. fucking made the thing and they put it yeah. out there good for them yeah i'm that's more than most kudos. people than us more than us yeah <laughs> we're just two fat bitches on a couch <laughs> so like i get it but also it just the execution, it was just it was the so editing, close the editing was just ah, it was right there it was right there and they were just like nope yeah just just yeah, kidding i'm Jokes. disappointed yeah well actually now thinking about the fact that if it was based on the kenny beach thing mm. maybe not having him go into the mines and perish was a better option i maybe agree him finding a yeah. cabin was their way to be like it's mm, not kenny beach it's not kenny beach, it's not kenny beach. Yeah. i'm not gonna lie dude that kind of i'm not gonna say i wish it was kenny beach because that's a real tragedy yes yeah. but i am gonna say that like if you are gonna take in inspiration mm-hmm. yeah influence mm-hmm. from this one dude just go for it just fucking send don't, it don't yeah don't don't teeter totter no, around it don't just, just put up a weird ass shack in the middle of the desert yeah just do it just please put him near a mine and call it a day yeah Lucky you could have this same weird belted man could have just come out of the the, the a bush the bush or something out yeah. of a fucking out of the, out of the, the beginning of the mine or some shit yeah. like that could have just been hiding in, in a shaft somewhere yeah, yeah 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 i still can't get over the what did what did you say about the french i can't even remember i could also so... be afraid if i heard french <laughs> i thought you were gonna say if i heard french in the desert the fact that you just deadpan stopped that was why i laughed so hard <laughs> i'm glad that that got you that was so good i'm glad i thought it was gonna keep going so <laughs> no just french in general is quite terrifying <laughs> okay bye bye <laughs> That, I really thought that you were going to keep going. That's why I was... I waited for a second. And, I saw you. You were like... And then the fact that you just... And I'm like, stopped. no, that's it. Nope. I just don't like French. I just don't like French. <laughs>